What I want you to get out of this, this lecture is what are the questions that can be asked? What are the things that you can demand, um, you know, uh, scientists and, and folks associated with chemicals to, to investigate or report? So when we're doing uh, an analysis, you need to say, hold it. I know that this is going to affect molecular design and why isn't XYZ being done, okay? So when we're talking about hazard, we're talking about physical hazards, global hazards, um, plant and animal toxicity and eco hazards. Uh, we're going to focus a lot on toxicity, uh, but not exclusively. And so we're going to look at uh, some of these strategies. Going from the types of hazards, understanding of mechanism to the physical chemical properties, all the way to the framework. This is a construct to think about um, the molecular design. So when you start looking at the various strategies that you can take for molecular design, we think about the, the base of the pyramid. And at the base of the pyramid, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I should say, that it runs from toxicokinetics to toxicodynamics. Toxicokinetics, uh, those things that allow the, the molecules into the body, uh, toxicodynamics, the reactions and interactions that take place once the molecule is in the body is a good way to uh, distinguish that. And that goes up in this direction. At the foundation of the pyramid for molecular design, in many ways, your most powerful tools are right down here. The other good thing about this is <coughs> they're also your conceptually easiest tools. So we're going to get into levels of complexity up here that are extremely challenging scientifically. Extremely challenging scientifically and there are things that I don't necessarily problem see necessarily being solved in the next decade or more. There's a lot of research up here that is tremendously complex. But the good news is just because you can't do everything doesn't mean that you can't do anything. And so as we talk through these, I, I want folks to be thinking about, oh, uh, but people are saying that, that this can't be done and that can't be done. It's true. There's a lot that's unknown and there's a lot that can't be done. What I want you to, uh, to know is that there's a tremendous amount that is known scientifically and can be done today and is being done today. Okay. So when we take a look at these, these various strategies at the base of the pyramid, we get that increasing complexity as I was, as I was talking about. But let's go right to, uh, uh, to some of these, these properties that we can manipulate. Um, so right down here, molecular weight. Are chemists able to control molecular weight? Yeah. Why do you care about molecular weight? It's going to be a lot harder to absorb. It's going to be harder to absorb through our membranes. All right, so we go to solubility. Um, so we have molecular weight, solubility. Again, why do we care about solubility? So there are different things. Um, is it going to build up in our bodies? Is it going to cross our, our membranes? Why would we care about volatility? Uh, what's, uh, what's something that's particularly volatile that we're concerned about being in our air? CFCs makes its, uh, its way all the way up to uh, stratosphere. Electronic charge. When, when something's charged, it's, uh, to, if something has a charge to it, it's going to, uh, whether it's in the biosphere, it, it might bind to particular particles like humic acid. It also is going to have uh, uh, usually greater difficulty crossing biological membranes. All right, so molecular weight. We know that with a molecular weight of greater than 1,000, you're going to have essentially no skin transport. We know that with a molecular weight of greater than 500, you're going to have essentially no lung transport. It gets into your lungs, it can't transport across your lungs. And with a molecular weight of greater than 300, you're going to have essentially no GI tract transport. So that's, that's really important um, because from where we started, no ability to get into your body, no ability to cause adverse consequence. So volatility. So, um, so say that if something has a vapor pressure, 
uh, of less than 10 to the minus, well, we'll go here, 10 to the minus 3, there's not going to be atmospheric dispersion. It's not going to get the kind of uh, atmospheric contamination. If you have 10 to the minus 6 tor, you're not going to have uh, essentially any inhalation uh, to that uh, substance, any, in any inhalation risk. 10 to the minus 8 tor, you're going to have almost no potential for reaching the lower flammability limit. Okay. So you start asking questions. How do I make this substance maintain whatever function it has, but I want to make sure that it doesn't get dispersed in the atmosphere? I want to make sure that it doesn't get respired by my workers. I want to make sure that it never has the possibility of bursting into flames. Uh, these are some of the guidelines that are able to be derived.